Welcome to All That Catholic Stuff, I'm Chris Bray. If you were to ask Catholics what they think of the Harry Potter series, you will get two very extreme, polarizing, divisive, yet definitive answers. First one is, it's awesome, and there's no problem with it. The second one is, it's evil, and nobody should have anything to do with it. So how do we sift through the arguments using reason and Catholic principles to evaluate the merit of this literary work? I find that most people have actually never investigated this issue for themselves, and when I did, I was shocked at what I found. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe on YouTube and click the bell to be notified when I post new videos. Wash over me, God, take the Harry Potter series has been all the rage for the last 20 years, yet the content of this literary work has been quite controversial for Catholics and Christians, namely because of its reference to magic and spells. So what are Catholics to make of these books, and should we be reading them? Full disclosure, I am not a fan of Harry Potter. Now, some of you are probably going to stop watching this video right now and be completely offended. But the reason that I'm not a fan of Harry Potter isn't necessarily because there are or aren't immoral references in the content of the literature. The reason that I'm not a fan of Harry Potter is because I just didn't find the storyline very interesting. I'm not a fan of that particular genre. The only type of story that I like in fantasy really is the story of Superman. Personally, I love crime novels, and it's interesting that that particular genre has a ton of immoral content referenced within it, especially in comparison to the Harry Potter series. What I find very revealing is that most people have actually never investigated this issue for themselves on either side of this argument. Most people seem to arrive at a decision emotionally rather than based on rational discernment and true investigation of this literary work. I was forced to actually look at this issue because of my own kids. As Catholics, we had stayed away from the Harry Potter series because it was kind of taboo and because we had heard other people had voiced concerns with the series itself. Because I had no intention to actually read the books, it's not something that I ever needed to investigate for myself. It wasn't until my daughter asked if she could read them that I gave her the answer, no, you know, we could probably read like the Chronicles of Narnia or the Lord of the Rings series. But when her friends began to read the Harry Potter series, naturally, she wanted to read it as well. And so she asked me again. And again, I said, no, we, we probably don't need to read those books. This time she asked, but why? And I realized that I had no answer to give her. I skimmed through some very brief and opinionated arguments on both sides of this issue, and then I realized that I needed to actually investigate this myself. When I started to pull the threads of criticism against Harry Potter, I realized very quickly that most of the people who were in opposition of this series had actually never read the books before. And so I read the first book, and it was a typical children's imagination fantasy book. It had magic, it had spells, and it had the idea and the concept of good triumphing over evil. After I read the first book, then I looked at, well, what does the Catholic Church teach about sorcery and magic? And this is what the Catechism of the Catholic Church has to say in paragraph 2117. All practices of magic or sorcery by which one attempts to tame occult powers so as to place them at one's service and have a supernatural power over others, even if this were for the sake of restoring their health, are gravely contrary to the virtue of religion. So when I finished reading the book, my daughter asked me again, so can I read it? I said, well, there's magic and there's spells and the Catholic Church teaches against sorcery, so we probably shouldn't read these books. Then my daughter said something to me that actually made me stop and have to think objectively and to think critically about this issue. And then my daughter said, yeah, but dad, there's spells and magic in most of the Disney movies that we watch. Cinderella's fairy godmother has a wand and recites spells. Aladdin has a magic carpet, a magic genie in the reciting of spells. Snow White is put to sleep by a spell that is put on an apple that is only to be broken by the kiss of a prince to break the curse. In Beauty and the Beast, the prince had a spell cast on him which turned him by magic into the beast. Even Mary Poppins has magic in it. And so when my daughter brought up all of these good and valid points of consideration, I said, you know, you're absolutely right. I need to give this some more consideration. And then I, I realized that the very books that I recommended her read instead of Harry Potter actually had spells and magic in them too. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings and C.S. Lewis's Chronicles of Narnia series. All of them have magic and spells in it as well. So what is the difference? If the church condemns sorcery and witchcraft, does that also mean that we cannot entertain in our imaginations the idea of magic 
and spells in literary form. What is the difference between Harry Potter casting a spell that shoots water from his wand and the evil queen casting a spell on an apple that makes Snow White fall asleep? What is the difference between Harry flying on a magic broomstick to play a sports game and the magic of mind control in The Lord of the Rings. After all, just like in the Disney movies or in The Lord of the Rings or the Chronicle of Narnia series that you see a promotion of magic and spells, we also see the concept in the Harry Potter series of good triumphing over evil. The Catholic Church condemns spells and sorcery. And so if a person were to willfully intentionally participate in a spell from Harry Potter even, even for a good reason, it would still be gravely immoral. However, there is an obvious difference between willfully participating in Conjuring of the Dead via a Ouija board in real life, for example, and entertaining a fantasy story in our minds via a literary work. In fact, if we were to rule out the Harry Potter series based on this criteria, then we would also need to rule out the Lord of the Rings, the Chronicle of Narnia series, and most Disney movies today. Furthermore, and here's the crazy part, by this logic, we would also need to remove several books from the Bible. In 2 Maccabees, these soldiers wore these superstitious amulets. And in 1 Samuel, we see Saul conjuring up Samuel from the dead, even for a good and noble purpose, and yet God still condemned it. Should we condemn these literary works as well? We can quickly see how irrational an extreme position can be when we follow it to its logical conclusion. Let's examine the arguments against the Harry Potter series. Number one, it supposedly promotes behavior contrary to Catholicism. Yes, but what we've already deduced is so does any literature that has the concept of a hero and a villain. Because a villain will always promote and encourage behavior that is contrary to the faith. That's what makes them a villain. Argument number two is people claim that the spells in the Harry Potter books are actually real spells. Most of the spells in the Harry Potter books are actually gibberish Latin variations of words. For example, the spell Livicorpus, which is a variation of two Latin words. The first one meaning light and the other one meaning body. So you put those two things together and it portrays the idea of levitating. Then another example is the spell sonorous, meaning loudly or to amplify one's voice. Reading or even speaking Latin, even gibberish Latin variations of words at best doesn't mean that you are reciting a spell or that you are committing sorcery. Argument number three is that Regardless of whether or not these are real spells in the Harry Potter books, if someone tries to use them intentionally for sorcery, then they have done something immoral. Yes, absolutely. I fully agree. Like, it's just like any other story or literature that has a villain, which promotes and encourages behavior that is contrary to our faith, such as the example of Joker punching Batman in the face. And if somebody were to read that in a literary work, and decided that they too also wanted to participate in that kind of behavior with the intent of hurting somebody unjustly, and they decide to punch their friend in the face, well, guess what? They too would also be participating in something that is immoral. Argument number four is that Harry Potter normalizes and glamorizes magic. Some arguments against Harry Potter suggest that the difference between the Chronicles of Narnia and the Lord of the Rings is that those Christian literary works preserve the moral order of magic. This is the idea that witches are always bad and those who practice magic are always evil. However, I don't believe this to be true of Tolkien and C.S. Lewis. Gandalf, which is a good character, uses magical powers. And even a story like The Wizard of Oz, yes, it portrayed the Wicked Witch of the West, but it also portrayed the Good Witch of the North, Galinda who used a wand and also had supernatural powers. Some opponents of Harry Potter will go to the extreme and say that anything that portrays magic should not be read. But that also excludes Tolkien, Lewis, and some books of the Old Testament. Often the argument is that we should boycott the Harry Potter series because it normalizes and glamorizes evil, but surely proponents of this idea can't possibly be suggesting that we remove villains from every literary work. I mean, think about how boring stories would be if there were no villain, if there was no opportunity for good to triumph over evil. So when my daughter asked me why she couldn't read the Harry Potter series, I had no good reason to say no. Obviously, we want to give our children literary works that are appropriate 
for their age level and their maturity. And at the end of the day, if my kids are reading books, that is a win. It doesn't mean that my kids aren't reading great literary works. They just also happen to be reading this other stuff. Yeah, I'm not a fan of it. I don't think it's an amazing literary work, but I also don't think that we should be banning and be boycotting the Harry Potter series for irrational arguments by people who have actually never read the book before. But perhaps our approach should be that we take the good and we leave the bad. And we use this as an opportunity to open up discussion and dialogue with our children, to talk about what is right, what is wrong, and most importantly, what we can learn from it. I don't care for Harry Potter. I don't like it, I'm not a fan, but I also do not see a rational argument against it either. I will give you this warning and I will say this to paraphrase the words of Jesus, that if your Harry Potter is causing you to sin, then cut it off. And what I mean is, is that by reading the Harry Potter series, we are being drawn into the occult, into an unhealthy appetite for the supernatural and the dark. Then maybe it's time that we ditch it. So if you're a fan of mediocre fantasy, and I apologize because I probably just offended like 50% of you watching this, and you investigate this and you find that is justified and there is merit and warrant in reading these books, then go for it. But let's not dismiss a literary work based on the irrational arguments of people who for the most part probably have never even read the books. Have you read the Harry Potter series? And if you have, what is your take on how we can apply these Catholic principles to this literary work? I would love to hear your thoughts below. Make sure you comment. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon on YouTube so that you are notified when I post future videos. Lastly, I would love for you to consider supporting my ministry on Patreon. You get access to my talks and music and faith resources and it helps me be able to continue to provide these faith resources for people who need it. Just go to patreon.com slash Chris Bray. Thanks and God bless you.